Hi, Jeff Solden in Detroit at the North American International Auto Show. I'm here with Peter Kalarafi. He's the president and CEO and the designer of the stunning Verde Revenge supercar. Can you tell us a bit about your background, Peter? My background, uh, for 20 years in Australia, I was assisting GM with designs, assisting uh, accessories for vehicles and body styling, that style of thing. Uh, when the uh, Holden Monaro was sent to America, uh, I could see it was never going to be marketed as a, a Pontiac GTO and be successful. I restyled the vehicle and uh, we were able to sell that vehicle, assist sales and remodel that vehicle to help sales here in America. Right, and quite successfully too. Uh, it was quite good for us, a uh, little at the end of, uh, of the program, but uh, it got foot in the door to show what we could do. We won Design Award for 2007, that's, that's a big thing for us, uh, to move to another country and get a Design Award. So that was big for us in 2007, opened a lot of doors, but my passion was always supercars and making supercars efficient. To change a clutch in a Lamborghini is $35,000, change a clutch in this vehicle is under $5,000. Yeah. And it's so, been part of your philosophy, hasn't it? Yeah. To source the best from the best? The best from the best and make it affordable, you know. No sense in having a vehicle that you pound on and it's going to cost you a fortune. You need to be able to pound on it and then replace the parts mm -hmm. at an affordable thing. Make the car fun. But the main background of the car also is to have a sports car that we can test this new engine out in and just see how it's going to run, perform, uh, durability, uh, all those sort of things as far as uh, for a passenger vehicle, that's where we're after, to try and, uh, for families, more fuel efficient vehicles. Mm -hmm. um, but with the Verde, you've had orders already from around the well, world? We have, we have a lot, we, from uh, Hungary to uh, uh, due is from London, uh, from the Ukraine and Shanghai. So yeah. the amount of interest just in the last few days is huge. And the cost of the car? Is under $200,000. It is expensive when you say that, but for a supercar it's not. And for modern technology, uh, it's definitely not. And uh, what's the production run going to be like? Over the next four years, we will go into production later this year, 2010. And over the next four years, we will produce 3,000 of these supercars. Can you tell us a bit more about the construction of the car? Uh, the car has a full carbon fibre body. All the hang-on panels are made out of aluminum. The doors, the trunk, the hood is all aluminum. Uh, the brakes are a carbon ceramic fibre. They will last the lifetime of the car and they have 50% less weight factor to them than a normal iron style of rotor. Mm -hmm. uh, the wheels are 20 inch wheels, 12 inch uh, uh, width on the back and 9 inch on the front and uh, has a sequential transmission in it, meaning that you can either change gears up on the steering wheel or sequential on the gear stick, stick shift. While Peter was responsible for the overall design of the Verde, I also had the opportunity to talk with Doug Palmier, the designer of the hybrid HP 2G engine that is one of the motors being used in the car. Hi Doug. How are you doing today? What can you tell me about this motor? It's very special, this hybrid, isn't it? Yes, it is. It's the first true hybrid engine it has an electric motor inside of a V8 engine. Right, and just tell us how that works. How do you get the uh, incredible fuel economy, I believe, about 100 miles per gallon, is that right? Yeah, that's correct, and we're on E85 fuel. Um, it has three different uh, portions of this motor. One's cylinder displacement, so we're turning off cylinders, rotating cylinders that are burning in there, and it can go as low as one cylinder. Which would have taken a long while to construct, I believe. That, that's its own computer. And then there is two different electric drives inside of it. There's an electric motor around the crank and uses the crank as the rotor. Mm -hmm. So there's an electric motor there. And then there's also, we're using electric to pull and push the piston up and down. Oh, magnetics, right? That's correct, magnetics. So what other vehicles are you looking at putting it into, the motor? Well, I originally had planned on it going into the SUVs and truck line. That's why it has 400 horse and 500 foot-pounds of torque. Because, you know, everybody wants a big vehicle, but they still want fuel economy. Mm -hmm. And the motor it, it doesn't need to run at uh, full strength, the 500 horsepower all the time, does it? It can get down to as low as what? It can go as low as one cylinder if you're setting idling. You know, that way the mo momentum's still there. You pull away from a light. Um, cylinders can go upwards from one cylinder all the way to eight. And that's what was appealing to Revenge, wasn't it? Yes, it is. Right. Um, and the Revenge has talked about bringing out a, a family car as well, with uh, that type of, your, your motor in that as well. Is that where you think these things heading? Uh, we obviously want to go mainstream to the, the regular 
um, people that want cars. I mean, this especially car market is a place that normally a lot of this new technology starts. Mm -hmm. And not all V8s, you'll be making other size motors? Yes, four, six. Mm -hmm. Depending what the market needs, right? That's correct, and the size of car. All right, thanks, Doug. Thank you.